Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. A good deal has been made these days of the power of the ancients over life and death. Since no one has ever returned to tell us, we have no idea whether any one belief in any one deity guarantees life after death. Does Charon run his ferry across the Styx in both directions? Will Anubis guide any other nationality than ancient Egyptians to judgment? Will Vishnu appear to the Hindus or to all of us to punish the wicked? Though we have no positive answer, today's mystery tale is worth checking out. Frank, where have you been? I've been going crazy trying to reach you. I've been to Boston for a three-day seminar. What's the matter? Can you please come over right now? You're my husband's best friend. I've nobody else to turn to. He just sits there in front of that statue like a zombie. And I'm scared. Please, Frank, hurry. Hurry. Our mystery drama, Messenger from Yesterday, written especially for the Mystery Theater by Gerald Keene, stars Norman Rose. would never have happened if the college had not been named Imhotep. But there it was, christened Imhotep College, after the Egyptian god of knowledge in a small New England town. Except for a department of Egyptology, this college carried a pretty complete curriculum from accounting basics to writing art of effective. So why did it happen there? That man driving a 1969 station wagon into a driveway. That's where our story begins. Gloria! Hey, Gloria, I'm home. I know you are. It's the one in the house. Gloria, can you come outside a moment? Darling, I'm in the middle of frosting my own birthday cake, if you want to know. I know it's your birthday, honey. That's why I want you to come out to the car. I can't come now, Rim. You'll be sorry, Gloria. All right. Oh, men, you are all alike. I have to stop what I'm doing because King Tut here, my famous professor of Egyptian history, has given an order. All right, now, well, what is it? I don't see anything. Look in the back. Ramsey. What is that? Are you crazy? <laughs> Happy birthday, darling. A life-size statue of an Egyptian pharaoh? I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Do you think it looks all right in that corner? Oh, I don't know, Gloria. You see the way its right arm is sort of bent at the elbow? Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking if we could sort of, you know, prop it up against the mantelpiece. How would it look like... <laughs> Ramsey, you are really too much. You bring me a life-size reproduction of a standing pharaoh, and you want to put it in the middle of the room? Oh, it'll look like it's leaning with its elbow <laughs> on the mantelpiece. Come on, how about it? A contemporary sculpture. Oh, I can imagine what our friends will say when they come to visit. Gloria, who's your friend? Or, uh, Gloria, there's a man by the mantelpiece. Uh, I was kidding. I think it looks great in the corner. Uh, can you think of any other place? It is the only place. I certainly don't want it in the kitchen, and I don't see it in the bedroom. Mm. All kidding aside, sweetie. You like it? How can I not like it? it? It's beautiful. All that guilt. Must have cost a fortune, but I'm afraid to ask. Gloria. Gloria, look at it. Am I crazy, but wasn't one arm bent a moment ago? What? What? Bent? I'm not crazy because I do remember. Mr. Ray of the junk teak shop where I got it, I remember we were carrying it out to the station wagon and that, that right arm was bent. Mr. Ray said it probably had been, you know, holding something like a spear. Well, how could it have been bent? That's what I want to know. Because right now, that pharaoh has got both his arms straight down at his sides. Am I forgiven, Gloria? Oh... I don't know. I'll think about it. Dinner will be ready soon. 
I don't mind cooking my own birthday dinner or baking my own birthday cake, but in all the years we've been married, you have never come home without champagne. I will never forgive myself for forgetting it. Mm. I've got no excuse whatsoever. Classes were over early, too, because my students had a test today, so I didn't even have to do any teaching. Well, I guess it was all the excitement of finding this full-size standing pharaoh in that crazy place. You know, it just threw me. I can't believe he let you have it for so little. Are you telling me the truth, Ramsey? Well, it's a reproduction. The dealer said that this was a test statue. You know how they do it. They make a mold of the original and then cast copies from that. I guess this one was imperfect, so they chucked it. Oh, not so anyone could tell. Well, all right, Professor West, if you can tear your eyes away from my golden cell for an hour, dinner is on the table. Oh, boy, that was some feast, Gloria. Well, I gotta loosen my belt. <laughs> that chocolate cake. Some more coffee, darling? Are you bet. Uh, look, can I have a second piece? You cannot. I'm putting the rest of this cake in the fridge where you cannot get at it. Ramsey! Ramsey West, you old faker. You bought it after all and snuck it into the ice box. What did I do? This bottle of champagne. And I was beginning to feel sorry for myself. Hey, where did that come from? Oh, Mr. Innocent. Gee, glory, I forgot. I got so excited finding this Egyptian statue in a junk shop, I clean forgot it. Oh, honey, this bottle of champagne, I, I never saw it before, believe me. You are the sweetest absent-minded professor I ever married. Go on, open it. I love surprises. But, Gloria, honest. Will you stop it? Now, the next thing you're going to say is that the pharaoh put the champagne in the ice box. <laughs> Hello? Ma! Oh, gosh, it's good to hear your voice. Uh, how's Dad? Mm hmm. How's life in Florida? What? Oh, she is. W w when did that happen? Oh, my gosh. Well, now, look, if Sis is ill and there's no one to take care of the kids, sure I'll go. Uh, uh, which hospital? Uh-huh. I'll take the next plane to Chicago. Don't you worry. Uh, no, Ramsey can't come. It's exam time at college. Now, listen, don't you worry about Sis. And, and call you when I get there. Okay. And love to Dad. Uh, can I speak to Professor West? Uh, well, this is his wife, and it's urgent. Oh, I see. Uh, well, then can I leave a message for him? Okay, tell him that my sister is sick, and I'm taking the next plane to Chicago to help take care of her kids. Will you see he gets that? Thanks a lot. Gloria? Gloria, I thought you'd gone to your sister's. Oh, great Scott. The pharaoh's vacuuming the living room. I am making this house ready for the long journey. I must be going crazy. Hearing things. This, well, this just doesn't happen. A statue that, that moves, that talks. I better get Frank on the phone fast. He'll know what to do. Hello. Uh, hello, Frank. Hi, Ramsey. What's on your mind? Oh, Frank, are you busy? No, I was just going across the street to a diner for a little supper. They got Greek rice pudding. Oh, look, Frank, would you mind coming over here? When? Now. What's the problem? You sound kind of funny, Ramsey. What's the matter? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm suffering from some kind of delusions. What's that noise I hear? Well, someone is uh, vacuuming. 
Oh, I thought Gloria was out of town. Look, Frank, don't ask so many questions. Just get yourself over here as fast as you can. And even when I pulled the vacuum cleaner plug out of the wall, the machine kept right on going, and the Pharaoh kept moving it across the rug. Oh, come on, Ramsey. What is this? That statue over there in the corner was doing your house cleaning? Oh, what can I tell you? <laughs> Gloria will love you if you're your little Egyptian homemaker when she gets back. No minimum wage or social security to cough up. Frank, I tell you, that figure standing there against the wall was vacuuming. All right. All right. Let's be scientific about it. First, let's examine it. Now, think. Oh, it's really a beauty. I haven't seen anything like this outside a museum. Is it on loan from someone? Oh, it's Gloria's birthday present. I picked it up at Mr. Ray's junk teak for next to nothing. You were always lucky. Look at the workmanship. This must have been made by one of the master carvers. And the age of it. 19th Dynasty, am I right? Well, the original probably was. This five-foot-five five statue is a copy? Yeah, from the Edwards collection. Oh, even copies aren't cheap. I don't know what to tell you, Ramsey. It's a physical impossibility for this statue to move. You must have imagined it. I didn't. I tell you, it's physically impossible. Now tap all the way around to the back. See? Solid, through and through. It's not on casters. Now, how could the legs have been walking? Search me, but they were. I'd say, on the basis of what you tell me, you need a rest from teaching Egyptology. You've probably become so immersed in your subject, the, uh, how can I put it, the, uh, the ancient Egyptians have become so real to you that your mind has brought this statue to life. Frank, will you take a look at the handle of this vacuum cleaner? Do you see those specks? I'll be a son of a gun. Mm -hmm. Would you say that on this handle there are traces of gilt and gold paint? Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Do you still think that I was seeing things? No. But I'm beginning to wonder about me. Ramsey, how many drinks have we had? Go on, tell me more. It said... I am making this house ready for the long journey? Right, as clearly as you're saying it now. Mm. Tell you what I think. And I'm not a professor of psychology without pretty much knowing that field. Especially aberrations. Aberrations? Mm. The human mind is a funny thing. There comes a time when it acts as though it had a mind of its own. You've just had a signal, that's what. A warning. Your mind is saying, Ramsey, you've been overworking. I'm going to give you a sign that'll scare the daylights out of you. So you had better take a rest. And that's what my mind is saying to me. Mm -hmm. More or less. Ah, uh, well, I guess you're right. Mm -hmm. It's been my experience that if those signals are disregarded, the subject could be heading for a nervous breakdown. Now, that's a little free advice. Now, got any food in the kitchen? I'm starving. <laughs> Wait till you see Gloria's creamy chocolate cake. She's got it tucked away in the icebox. Frank, look at all that food on the kitchen table. Hey, you're a heck of a cook. And lit candles. And my favorite little fat steaks. Ah, and chocolate cake on the side and coffee on the burner. Hey, I ought to come over here more often. Frank, I didn't prepare that meal. What are you talking about? I tell you, I had nothing to do with cooking this dinner or setting the table or lighting the candles. Well, whatever magic you practice, it turned out great. Sure beats the diner. I'm sitting down and digging in. Mmm. Wonderful. Cooked to a tea. I hope the nourishment was prepared as you wish. Mm, what did you say? Frank. Frank, turn around. Look who's standing in the door. Jumping Jehoshaphat. The Pharaoh. When faced with extraordinary or unexplainable phenomena, the first step is to assess what you know. Better than most other people, Professor West knows the ancient Egyptians believed that life continued after death. Whether there is fact 
in such a belief? Who can tell? But certainly, the power of movement, recognition, and speech had been given to this plaster effigy of a man who lived 2,500 years ago. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Is there a link between the past and the present? Some theorists believe we are all linked in a chain, an endless belt of humanity, destined to go round and round, which might explain why generation after generation seems to make the same mistakes. Or is there linear time, as others have said, that we are but travelers on a river of time, passing the shores of events? Whatever the theory, the fact remains that in the house of a college professor, a statue has moved and spoken. It was the darndest thing. Uh, I've made a lifetime study of philosophies and psychologies, and the only explanation I could comfort myself with was mass mesmerism. Hypnotists use it, faith healers use it, and somehow, Ramsey and I had fallen for it. I swear to you, Frank, I had nothing to do with preparing that dinner. Now, don't keep saying that. It's too much for me to handle right now. Uh, let me just add up what I do know. And here I am in your living room. It's 10 o'clock at night. I've eaten. I'm sitting in front of your fireplace. You're six feet away. I'm standing upright, leaning against that mantelpiece. Is a five-foot... Five, reproduction of a 19th dynasty pharaoh. Now, how far would you say I am from the pharaoh? Oh, two feet, three, somewhere between. Mm -hmm. It's made of plaster. Has two feet that are well balanced on the ground. No platform. Covered with gold paint. What any scientist would call a totally inanimate object. Yet I saw it move and I heard it talk. I'm glad it's you too, Frank. We might get a raid on twin straitjackets. Now, wait a minute. I, I never said you were disturbed. What I said was, you may be under a strain. So we're both under a strain. Now, let's keep pulling it apart. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? I'm trying a new tobacco, and when I see you turning blue, I'll stop. Yeah, there are matches up there on the mantelpiece. Yeah. Now, where's that tobacco? Did you say there were matches up here? Oh, my heavens. Will you look at him? He's, he's lit a match for you to light your pipe with. Thank you, Pharaoh. Thank you. I've got it. There was a slip-up when these copies were being manufactured, and you got yourself a robot. A robot? Well, how's that possible? Anything is possible. No, that's not what I mean, Frank. A robot has to be programmed like a computer. My Pharaoh acts independently. He sees a problem. He solves a problem. He deduces we're hungry. He makes a meal. The room needs cleaning. He does it. I'm not denying that you haven't got yourself a very special kind of robot. Oh, I've got an idea. Um, well, uh, thanks a lot for coming over, Frank. I'll uh, I'll see you to the door. But I, I, I don't... Oh, come on. Do you think the Pharaoh can listen and understand us? Who knows? But I'm not taking any chances. Let's go outside. I'll walk you up the street. Uh, look, I'll, uh, I'll fix the latch so I can get back inside. Okay, shoot. Oh. I've got to find out who made that pharaoh. You've got something. Who indeed? Now, after my 10 o'clock class tomorrow, I've got the rest of the day off. I'll go to the junk teak and find out where he got it and keep tracking back. How about you? You want to come? Can't. Big day for applied psych. I'm free in the evening, though. A horrible thought that crosses my mind is maybe some manufacturer is turning out a whole army of robots, and all of them may not like to do housework. Hey. Hey, what is this? I'm, I'm locked out. I know I put this door on the latch. Hey, let me in. Pharaoh, stop kidding around. Let me in. About an hour 
later, I was home reading in bed. And Ramsey called. Told me he'd been locked out. Had to break a window to let himself in. Said the Pharaoh was just where we left him. Standing in the living room. The only thing different was all the ashtrays had been emptied and the glasses washed and put away. I told him he'd got a good thing there. He didn't think that was very funny. Hello. Is this Museum Masterpieces Incorporated? Uh, right. Oh, this is Ramsey West. I recently acquired a reproduction of a standing pharaoh, Seti the First, I think. It appears that way. Yeah, that's right. But you, you do make all those plaster cast copies from the Edwards collection, don't you? But yes, I do. Well, of course you can. I was going to come over and see you. Right, I'm at uh, 14 Elmhurst Drive. I'll be here the rest of the day. Oh, I didn't catch that name. Ludlow. And how will I know you? Uh, some some red hair, okay. Say, you are... <laughs> he hung up. <laughs> Mr. Ludlow? Mr. Ware? I thought you were. I know you. Your face looks familiar, too. Well, you're Red Ludlow, class of uh, 61. And you're... Uh, Ramsey West. I teach Egyptology at Imhotep College. Well, good for you. Oh, you're with Museum of Masterpieces, huh? Professor, I am Museum of Masterpieces. And that is my truck in your driveway. Oh, ah, yes, so it is. It's a nice job. Oh, come on in, Red. Well, actually, nobody calls me Red anymore. I've got so little of it left. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, where's the pharaoh? In the living room. Through here. Uh, there he be. The reason I wanted to uh, come over and talk to you, I wanted to know how many of these uh, have you made? Oh, just a hundred. If more orders come in, we'll cast another batch. Uh, do you think you could move him forward away from the wall? I want to look at something at the back. You see, we... Oh, my goodness. Was I imagining that? I... I... Thought he stepped forward. <laughs> well, I'm uh, <clears throat> spending too much time in the shop. Those fumes must be getting to me. What <laughs> are you looking for in back? A serial numbers. Uh -huh. You don't think the Egyptians put serial numbers on the statues of their pharaohs? Uh, no, but we do on the copies. It... Uh, oh, I was afraid of this. What's the problem? Uh, Professor, can you keep what I'm going to say completely confidential? Well, sure, but what's wrong? Well, of course, it goes without saying. Museum masterpieces will reimburse you for what you paid for the statue. Well, I don't know that I wish to part with it. Oh, I'm afraid you'll have to. No question about that. I'd say there's quite a big question about that. I gave this one to my wife as a birthday present. Oh, in that case, does it matter to you if we give you a duplicate reproduction instead of this one? It certainly would. I would... Well, you see, I've become rather attached to this particular copy. I'm afraid that's just the point, Professor. This is not the copy of the standing pharaoh said he the first. This is the original. And I'm afraid I shall have to remove it from this house. <laughs> oh, I, I'm blinded. I went off right, right in my face. All this smoke. A fuse must a fuse must have blown somewhere. Mr. Ludlow, Mr. Ludlow, where are... Mr. Mr. Ludlow? Red? Where are you? My son, he who stays the hand of Osiris must perish. Pharaoh. Pharaoh, did, did you make Red Ludlow disappear? That wasn't very nice of you. He is at peace with his ancestors. He is? Ramsey? Darling, I'm back. Oh, I'm so glad to be home. Honey, what's the matter with you? You look terrible. Oh, yes. Well, uh, well it's just the uh, shock of seeing you. Uh, how's your sister? Shock? Well, that's a nice thing to say, I don't think. Oh, I tell you, it's good to be home. Ah, oh, and there's that beautiful pharaoh. How are you, pharaoh? Did you take good care of Ramsey while I was away? Don't talk to him. Uh, don't say anything. Well, why shouldn't I? He's my pet, Vero, my birthday present. Ah, you never know. What would you do if he answered you? Well, uh, depends. I guess if he spoke 19th Dynasty Egyptian, that would knock me out of the box right away. 
Well, so, let me look around. Well, I congratulate you. The place is spotless. Ramsey, you are a marvelous housekeeper. Well, I, uh, I had help. And the first thing I knew, Frank, there was this flash, and that was the end of Red Ludlow. Mm, I don't know what to say. And two minutes later, Gloria shows up. Her sister suddenly got well and came home from the hospital, so Gloria took the first flight back. Did you tell her what's been going on? Are you kidding? I don't even know how to explain his truck in our driveway. And what happens when museum masterpieces comes looking for the boss? They'll ring my bell, and the next thing you know, the police will stop by. What am I going to tell them? You sure can't tell them Red was atomized by a Pharaoh reproduction. They'll haul you off to the loony bin. That's another problem. It's the original. Lord knows what it's worth. It's probably priceless. First thing, get rid of that truck in your driveway. Well, how can I? When Red disappeared, the truck keys disappeared along with him. Then you're in the clear. No corpus delecti. No crime. Oh, I hope he's there. I just hope he's there. Hello. Oh, thank heaven, Frank, it's you. Yes, who's this? Gloria? Frank, please, please, could you come over right now? I know it's late, but I am so worried, and you're his best friend. I don't have anybody else to turn to. Frank, it's just terrible. He hasn't been to his classes all week. It's like I'm married to a zombie. He just sits there and... and... Frank, just hurry up and come over, will you please? Well, I've been waiting for you right here on the porch. I didn't want you to have to ring. Come on in. Okay. What is it, Gloria? Well, I told you he hasn't been to his classes for days. I don't know if he's ever going back. Where is he? In the living room. You won't recognize it, Frank. He, he's turned it into a tomb. What? He got some floor-to-ceiling photographic murals of the inside of some Egyptian's tomb from some museum, and they're on the four walls. The fireplace he turned into an altar... And then, you know that exhibit of Egyptian artifacts in the front hall of the college? He brought everything here. All those funny statues of dogs and jackals and snakes and masses of dried flowers and tall grasses, and he just stuck them in jars all over the living room. But why? I don't know. It's something to do with that Egyptian statue he brought me for my birthday. Gloria, get rid of it. He just sits there like a king on a throne with this stunned look on his face. I'll go in there right now, Gloria. I'll do what I can to snap him out of it. And the worst part of it is he he just won't let me near him. He makes his own meals. I don't know where he gets the food. Just comes out of thin air, I guess. He sleeps right in that room when that old army cot. I, I don't know what to do. And he won't let you go in there? When I go marketing, I have to go out the back door. Then I hear him talking, Frank, and I don't understand a word of it. You just leave him to me, Gloria. Go up to your room. And if I need any help, I'll holler. Is there a link between a statue thousands of years old and a teacher of today? Are there powers retained in carved wood and gilt that can transcend the ages? Was a spell woven by the ancients that can still hypnotize? If I were you, I'd just make sure your lucky charm is handy when you listen with me as I return shortly with Act Three. ordinary average house on 14 Elmhurst Drive in a room transformed to a replica of an Egyptian tomb, there is a statue, the Pharaoh Seti I. It speaks, it performs tasks, it seems to perform miracles, like making people disappear. Is there a scientist alive today who could create a robot of such powers? Or are these powers manifest beyond anything we can imagine? 
I'm not going to pretend I know the answers. All I knew was Ramsey West, professor of Egyptology at Imhotep College, had gotten himself much deeper into ancient death rites than he should have. And as his best friend, I would do anything to help him and protect him. Hi, Ramsey. How are you, old boy? Who is it? It's me, Frank. Say, you really made this into quite a museum, didn't you? What are you doing sitting on that... Where did you get that chair? A lot of nice designs you painted on that. Made it look like a throne. You may advance. Oh, hey, Ramsey. It's me, Frank. Neil. Neil, slave. What, are you kidding? You have been ordered to kneel. Oh, uh... Hiya, Pharaoh. I didn't see you standing there. Kneel, slave. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, I, I was going to kneel anyway. What is your message, slave? Uh, I just stopped by to see how you were, Ramsey. I see you got the Pharaoh still. So I guess nobody came around for him. Yes, yeah, hey, can I get up off my knees? Rise. Oh, Ramsey. Ramsey, snap out of it, pal. What's with you? Uh, what, uh, what's the matter? Ramsey, come on. Get up off that chair, will you? What? Uh, Frank? The least you could do is offer me a drink. Oh, Frank, Frank, is that you? Ramsey, you got to snap out of this. Now give me your hand. I'm not going to hurt you. That a boy. Now, slowly, I'm going to pull you off that throne. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Stop. Father, stop him. <laughs> Darn it. I must have tripped. How dumb can you be? I, 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 I can't get up. What's the matter with me? Bring me my crook and my flail. Ramsey, somebody stop playing games with me. Let me up off the floor. Ramsey, are you all right? Ramsey? Frank. Frank, are you hurt? I don't think so. I just can't get up. Gloria, go, run, get out of here if you value your life. The next five hours in Ramsey West's living room were about the most terrifying I'd ever known. It may be realized that, indeed, all those forgotten dynasties of ancient Egypt, all their beliefs that the dead and their families and friends would continue life after death, were no mere superstitions. But why Ramsey West should be caught in this web, I did not know then. At about two in the morning, I had talked myself hoarse. Ramsey fell asleep in his chair, and even the Pharaoh's eyes seemed to close. I crept out. Frank, is that you? I didn't expect to find you still up. Been sitting here in the kitchen all this time. Oh, Frank, what am I going to do? Let's begin with a cup of coffee. I, I've got the water on. You want strong, regular, or weak? How many spoonfuls? Strong, please. I just couldn't connect with Ramsey. I talked, but... Most of the time, he just didn't hear me. He's in some spell of some kind. I don't even want to know what it is. But how can we get him out of it? Huh? What's that? It's just the tea kettle. Cooped up in that mausoleum sure made me jumpy. I don't know if I should tell you this. I guess I have to. Somehow, that pharaoh... Somehow, it, it talks. It really does. Oh, Frank. Not you, too. I am perfectly sane, Gloria. It doesn't always say things that make sense to me. Right after you got yourself out of there, I was lying on the floor, remember? Ramsey said, Father, let him live. But let who live? Me. Now, there are two ways we can go. I can pick up the phone and call the hospital and tell them to send over the men in the little white coat. No, I couldn't do that, Frank. So let's try the other way first. Once during the evening, I heard Ramsey call the statue Father. Maybe that's the key. 
get rid of that statue, and we're okay. Now, have you got a hammer or a hatchet or something heavy like that? I think so. I don't know if we have a hatchet. Ramsey keeps all our tools in this drawer. There's a screwdriver and an egg beater. Oh, how's this? That's a pretty good-sized hammer. Thanks. This ought to do the trick. Plaster is plaster, and if you hit it right, it ought to shatter like glass. Gloria, I may make an awful mess of your living room, but it's the only way. What are you going to do? You know, he's sitting in the dark now. May even be asleep. Well, I'm going to walk into that living room, turn off all the lights, go over to that plaster payroll, and I'm going to break it up into little pieces. Frank, it, it's not a copy. It's the real thing, an original. Oh, well, yeah, no matter how valuable it is, believe me, it's not worth having above ground. Well, couldn't we call a museum and have them take it away? It must be destroyed. Look at the damage it's already done to this house. To Ramsey, to you... To me, you want to put this... There's only one word I have for that statue, this evil thing, into a museum where it might affect thousands of people who come to look at it? I never thought of it that way. Hmm. I'm going in now. You stay here. No, I can't. I have to be with Ramsey. He may need me. Okay. Yes, this hammer's a good weight. Let's go before we lose our nerve. Don't sit in the dark, Ramsey. Isn't that better? Got the light now. My crook and my flail. Bring them here. I'm here, Ramsey. So is Gloria. I don't know who you think will bring you a crook and flail, but I have my symbol of power, a hammer. I'm sorry, Ramsey, but we have to do it. There is evil intent in the air. You bet there is. Ramsey, stay there. Just stay out of my way. Don't strike the statue. I must. Frank What happened? Why did you drop the hammer? Uh, what? The hammer uh, What was I doing with the hammer? The pharaoh Yes So? You were going to smash it I don't see anything that needs fixing I can't remember now why I brought it in here you don't remember? <laughs> Gloria, forgive me. I've had a long day. A conference that lasted till two in the morning. And some of those abnormal sight papers my students handed in were a little too abnormal. Well, folks, it's been a nice evening. Thanks for the coffee, Gloria. Frank, where are you going and uh, why? Ramses has commanded me to leave this presence. I'm excused. So I obey. Frank, what's with you? You don't talk like that. So long. See you. Frank! Frank, for heaven's sake, come back. Don't leave me here. Please don't. Frank, stop. Stop. Frank, what happened? Oh, hi, Gloria. What are you doing out here? Frank, don't you remember? I don't know. Was there something I forgot? About Ramsey and that pharaoh. Oh, yes. Nice-looking statue. Of course, only someone who was into Egyptology would give it house room. Frank. You don't remember about half past nine, my phoning you, asking you to come over? Well, I guess I do. We had coffee in the kitchen, right? Do you remember why we did? What we talked about? Do you remember anything strange about our living room, the way it looks? Like an underground Egyptian tomb? And Ramsey sitting on a big wooden chair staring at that statue? Do you remember any of that? You were in there for two or three hours, you said. Vaguely. You don't remember we decided to smash that pharaoh with a hammer? Gloria, you're going to think I'm an awful dunce. And I don't know why it's all like some dream that starts to disappear the moment you wake up and you can't hold on to it. Now, why would I want to take a hammer to break up that pharaoh? It means an awful lot to Ramsey. Are you sure you didn't misunderstand me? Frank... Do you remember saying, Ramses has commanded me to leave his presence, and so I must go? Come on, Gloria. It's late. We're standing in the middle of the street, and you're telling me jokes. I'm getting an awful headache. 
So if you don't mind, I'll be on my way home. Tell Ramsey I'll call. I can't even remember what day it is. I'll see you, Gloria. I hope so. Gloria, is that you? Yes, it's me. Oh, Ramsey, why do you have to sit there? I wish you wouldn't. I wish you were you. My father has something to say to you. Oh, glorious Seti, speak to thy handmaiden. My daughter, are you prepared for the journey? What journey, great Seti? You and my son, Ramses II, have been rescued from reincarnation to return to the proud kingdom. This life you enjoyed in this century is not yours to keep. Return to join your ancient ancestors. The gods await you. Didn't I tell you, darling, this was a perfectly lovely house? Yes, the real estate agent said we could spend as much time as we liked here and then bring her back the key. It's completely furnished. Oh, really? Who does it belong to? Well, that's the funny part about it. The people who used to live here, a professor and his wife, one day they just left town, disappeared. <sighs> Will you look at what's standing in that corner? A pharaoh. Mm. Yeah, they just left it here. Mm, that might be worth something. The most curious coincidence is that he was the professor of Egyptology at the college, the job you're going to be taking. Well, come upstairs with me, darling. I want to show you how big the closets are. My son, my daughter, I shall be sending you your servants very, very soon. I've been looking through old textbooks on ancient Egypt to try to make sense of what happened. Of course, I was struck with the similarity of names, Ramsey and Ramses the second. Then I read all that about reincarnation, and I wondered, had they found themselves in the wrong century and had to go back? Your guess is as good as mine. Which reminds me to tell you what is inscribed over the tomb of Ramses' father at Abydos on the Nile. Death does not end all things. returns to earth to reclaim his son. Possible? Believable? The pharaohs placed their faith in scarabs, amulets, and colored stones and buried themselves so they might live forever. Is that any more primitive than current beliefs that opals are unlucky, jade wards off heart disease, copper wristbands cure arthritis? And as for the luck of rabbit's feet, numerology, astrology, let's just say the ancients had no corner on superstitions. Our cast included Norman Rose, Terry Keene, Gordon Gould, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. <laughs>